In this video, we're going to look at how the buttons or these dials that are on the right hand side of the watch, how they were created and the materials that were applied to them. Now, this is very familiar. Now, the procedure and the process of creating these is very similar to what we just learned when we created the buttons that are on the left-hand side of the watch. So we're going to be going pretty quick. The pace is going to be going pretty fast since most of it is repetitious, but I didn't want to eliminate it from the tutorial because I just wanted to make sure that every part of this watch in its construction and the way it was built was shown and demonstrated in these tutorials. So as always, let's go into our bath schematic and let's add an action node into our scene. Go to the end result and let's add our 3D shape. We're going to delete the G-mask and the axis that comes with it by default because we want to use a specific shaped G-mask. Select our 3D shape and then go down to our bin and hit the G key to access our G-mask tools. And let's drag a G-mask elliptical into our schematic. In the end result view, we're going to just click and drag while holding the Alt and the Shift key to create our shape. Again, we don't need it very big, generally about this size here. Something close to that will work perfectly. Let's select its axis and then in our view we can rotate it so we just see the shape inside the player, inside the viewport. Let's enable shading as we've done before. Make sure we select our actual 3D shape in the schematic and then we want to go and extrude it. Now let's add some depth to our geometry so make sure we have the 3D shape selected. From the basic parameters let's increase our depth amount. Let's first try 80. Now let's give a little more. Let's go and enter 100. That looks better. Let's go to the profile settings. Let's adjust the angle and the curvature as we've done before. I'll set the curvature to about 0.80 and I'll set my angle to 8. Now we want to add a rectangle shape, so let's go back to our schematics. Make sure our main axis is selected. And then let's go drag another 3D shape into the scene. We'll delete the G-mask and the axis above it. Go back to our select tool, select our 3D shape, go down to our node bin, hit the G key, and let's drag a G mass rectangle into the scene. Back in the result viewport, let's just click and drag in the view to create the G mass shape. We want it to be a rectangle where it is taller than it is wide, something like this. Go back to the schematic, select our 3D shape. With the 3D shape selected, go back to the object controls, go to the basic parameters. Let's add a depth of maybe 25. Select the axis for this shape. Go back to our view. We'll zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little better. Let's adjust the X position. I'll drag to the left. Set the X position to somewhere around negative 114. And then we want to rotate the X value also 90 degrees. Turn off proportional for scale. Scale the Y value down. Scale the Y down to about 70, 71. Now we want to repeat these using a replica tool. So go back to the schematic view, go to the node bin, hit R, drag the replica tool in, feed it in between the main axis and the axis that is for this new rectangle 3D shape. With the replica tool still selected, we'll go to our main result and go back to the object parameters. And for the number, I'll give it a number of 24. And then for the rotation of the Z, we'll enter 18. Now we have 24 of our rectangle shapes running around our original elliptical shape, and they're all angled 18 degrees apart from each other. I'll hit the I key to switch to selected icon. Go back to the schematic and select our 3D shape that is the rectangle, our second shape. Then on our object tab, we want to go to the profile for this shape, start adjusting our angle and our curvature to create the beveled edge that we want. I'll set the angle to be about 9 and we'll keep our curvature about 0.95 or so. We can adjust this later also. At this point, we're going to fast forward through the material because we've done it multiple times already. Just to understand, we've added a substance PBR to this. We're going to use the metal steel preset for the substance PBR. We're going to add an IBL. We're going to change the image that the IBL is using. We're going to change the color to black. We're going to adjust some of the parameters to it. We're going to create the image to use as the reflection map, and we're going to replace the reflection map. All of this is what we've done multiple times before. Now we're at the point where we want to fine tune our geometry a little more. Now I want to adjust the position of our rectangle shape. So let's go back into the schematic, make sure we select the proper axis, then go back to the end result. 
and we want to, not the Y, we want to adjust the Z position, we want to drag it down a little bit to lower them. We're going to adjust the X parameter to bring these shapes into our other shape, so they go inside the circle shape. And again, just adjust the values to get it to look as you want. I like the way that looks. Let's go back to our schematic and select the parent axis to everything. And now we can rotate it around in the scene to see how it's going to interact with our IBL, our reflections, our different materials, the PBR, the substance PBR we applied. Let's go back to the schematic and select our substance PBR number one again. I'll make some adjustments to our steel roughness and the surface imperfections. And then let's go to the texture tab and let's change our texture resolution. Let's bring it up. I'll bring it up to 2048 by 2048 to improve the resolution of the texture. And then we can select our rectangle geometry once again, now that we see the end result. And then we can start to make some further adjustments to control the end result, such as the position, the angle, and maybe the curvature. Just make adjustments until you're happy with the end result. So that's the end of this video. And like I said, a lot of what we just looked at was covered in the previous one, but I want to make sure you see how every part of this watch was modeled and created.